everyone, and welcome to our studio. David Matlow, how are you? I'm really well today, thank you. This is going to be an amazing show. We both have the love of Herzl, you especially. Tell us a little bit what you brought for us today, and maybe a little bit of a history lesson for those of us that maybe forgot a little bit uh, of our great man Herzl. Well, thank you so much for having me on your show. My pleasure. I am a, a lawyer in real life, but I also own the world's largest collection of Herzl memorabilia. I've been at this for about 25 years, and I, I'm on a mission. My mission is to tell people about Herzl, in, not in a history lesson kind of way, but in a relevant contemporary way. And so what I brought today are just a few samples of my collection. I have 5,000 items. Wow. And uh, I thought maybe I'll spend a few seconds on each one to give a little Please. bit of a background yes. about Herzl, Please. who Herzl was. So yep. Herzl was born in 1860 in Hungary and moved to Vienna as a teenager. He was born in 1860, as I said, and he died in 1904. And I done very young. Yeah, so 44, 44 years, 44 old. years yes. old, which is not a long no. lifespan. No. And only the last eight years of his life was dedicated to the issue of Zionism and improving the condition of the Jewish people. And so imagine all of this that I'm going to show was achieved in, in eight, eight years. years. In I eight know. years, Amazing. at a period of time where there was no telephone, there was no, no internet, Google. of course, <laughs> nothing. This was letters and person-to-person -person interactions. Yes. One of the myths about Herzl is that he uh, was a journalist at the Dreyfus trial in Paris, right. and that's what turned him on to the issue of Zionism and the condition of the Jewish people. That, but in, that's what I thought too, and I just said that to you before the show. Exactly, but yeah. in truth, he wrote um, a play. He was a, a journalist and a playwright. He wrote a play called The New Ghetto. This is a ha Hebrew translation, Haghetto ha HaChadash. Ha this particular edition is from 1898, translated wow. into Hebrew, but the play was written in February 1894. Wow. And it talks about the concern about a glass ceiling uh, where Jews can, above which Jews cannot achieve in society. So this was before the Dreyfus trial. The Dreyfus trial began later in 1894 and ran through uh, 1895. And Herzl was a journalist covering the trial yeah. for a Viennese newspaper, the Neue Freie Press. And Herzl heard in the courtroom, or outside the courtroom, death to the Jews. Yeah. This, is a, this is a front page of a Parisian magazine from 1895. And it depicts the people hanging on outside while um, a, a French military officer, Colonel Dreyfus, was wrongly accused of treason and lost his commission. Yeah. And it's from a scene like this where Herzl heard the uh, cries, death to the Jews. Jews. And that distracted Herzl greatly. That really crystallized his concern about anti-Semitism. So what he did, he went off and wrote a book. And the book that he wrote, it was initially a pamphlet uh, intended to be a pamphlet, but then it was printed. It was printed in early 1896. So this is the beginning of his Zionism in 1896, and he died in 1904. I know. He wrote the book Midinat HaYehudim, the Judenstat, the, uh, the Jewish state. And in this book, Herzl's idea was the cure to anti-Semitism was to have a place only of Jews, only a Jews. homeland for the Jewish people. So there'd be no anti-Semitism. That place would be only Jews, so how could there be anti-Semitism? And Jews would leave, leave Europe, so there'd be no anti-Semitism right. there. That was the idea. And having written the book, Herzl thought, I'm done, I wrote a book. book that's it. That's it, let's, great idea, let someone take, take it over. But Herzl was a doer. So it's one thing to have an idea, and it's another thing to do something about yes. it. And that's why there's so many things to collect about Herzl and why people like me are talking about him 120 years later, because he went about doing something. So what did he do? First thing he did was convene the first Zionist Congress in Basel in 1897. And this is a delicate card from that conference. And what it was, was a meeting for the first time in 2000 years Jewish people could get together 
and solve their own problems or try to solve and their own problems. And dream about going home. Uh, correct. And the dream of going home, it was yeah. in this Congress that the um, objective of Zionism was crystallized, which was a home for the Jewish people in our ancestral homeland, mm -hmm. which was then Palestine, which is now Israel. So that's in 1897. And Herzl, in his diary, he kept a very detailed diary. And after this Congress in Basel, he said, in Basel, I created the Jewish state. If I said this out loud now, people would think I'm crazy. But in five years, maybe, but certainly in 50 years, people will know I am right. He wrote that in 1897. Wow. Add 50 years, that's 1947. He was off by about nine months, yes. right? Because May of 1948, 1940, it happened. Yeah. Wow. And people know about Herzl and think about the first Zionist Congress and are very familiar with this classic picture of Herzl. It was taken by E.M. Lillian at the Fifth Zionist Congress in 1901. This is Herzl back in Basel on the hotel, uh, in the hotel, the Three Kings Hotel on the balcony okay. overlooking the river. Yes. This hotel still exists and I actually stayed in this very room. And you, you can see, I don't know if you can see on the camera, signed by Herzl. Yes. Herzl was a rock star. People would want his autograph and they would take pictures famous. of him to be signed. He was the Austin Matthews of his time, or maybe Zach Hyman, because Herzl was Jewish, yes. of course. Um, so um, there were six Zionist Congresses when, while Herzl was alive. One other thing that Herzl did was, I said he was a doer, so he created the Zionist Congresses, had six of them while he was alive, and these still exist. I think the 36th Zionist Congress happened about a year or two ago. He also thought, like all countries, we needs a fiscal system, needs a central bank, needs lending and borrowing. So he conceived of the idea of the Jewish Colonial Trust, which was a bank chartered under the laws of England. This is a share certificate from the Jewish Colonial Trust. It lists the directors here. Herzl was the, a director. And thousands and thousands of shares like this were sold wow. across Europe and America. The Jewish Colonial Trust, after a number of restructurings and with the existence of the State of Israel, is now the Bank Lumi. Bank Lumi. Still exists. Amazing. That's amazing. In, uh, in 1902, Herzl wrote his second book. He was a playwright, as we saw. He wrote the wow. Judenstadt. And then he wrote a book called Alt Neuland. And in this book, Alt, Alt Neuland is old new land. So it is a new land, a new Jewish homeland, a new Jewish state in the old place where the Jewish people used to live. That's the uh, old new land, old Neuland. And it was really about Herzl's utopian vision of what that Jewish state would look like. That book was translated into Hebrew as Tel Aviv. Tel being an agricultural site, yeah. Aviv being spring, yeah. old and new together. So the wonderful city of Tel Aviv, which was established in 1909, seven years after this book was written, is named after Herzl's book. Herzl went all around uh, Europe and to Palestine once, pleading for his cause. And he was a sickly man. And all this work ultimately led to his death. And, I, and so sadly so and are, suddenly in 1904, in yeah. July, Herzl died. So this is the cover page of Die Welt, which was a Zionist newspaper, which Herzl was the editor of. He was a busy guy. Um, essentially saying, Herzl is dead. dead. This was a tragedy, and he had a, a very, uh, very large, very um, powerful uh, funeral in Vienna. Herzl was an optimist. In his will, he said that, please bury me in a metal casket. And Jews traditionally are buried in wooden caskets. Yes. But the reason why Herzl wanted to be buried in a metal casket, because he said in his will. He wanted his bones to be moved to Jerusalem. Correct. When yes. the Jewish state is Welcome. created, yes. the state that he envisioned, yeah. he would like to be reinterred right. in that state. Herzl died at 44, yeah. we heard. 44 years later, in 1948, the Jewish state was created. Yeah. 
there was a war of independence. There was lots of chaos. There was lots going on. Yes. So the government of Israel at the time, led by Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion, yeah. when things settled down, so we're now in the spring of 1949, yes. set out to fulfill Herzl's last wish, was to, what, which was to be reburied in Israel. And so in August 1949, the uh, Herzl's... Uh, remains were dug up from Vienna and flew to Israel, lay in state in Tel Aviv and by the beach and in the Jewish Agency building in Jerusalem. Half the population of Israel at the time came out to see him. And this is from the Mariv newspaper. Nehuba, uh, here he comes. He yeah. Nehuba, here, here, he he's, comes. here he is, he's coming. Yeah. He, this was the ultimate fulfillment of Herzl's dream. But even after he died, um, before he came back to Israel, people remembered Herzl. Herzl was the symbol. It was the dream. He, correct. He said, if you will it, it is no dream. That was his motto. Yeah. He was about taking his idea, his dream, yeah. and bring it back to life. And so as the Jewish um, community started to grow in what was then Palestine, and yeah. the city of Tel Aviv was yeah. established, as I said, Every city in honor of Herzl had a Herzl Street. So this is a postcard from around 1910. Wow. It was sold in Russia, so I can see from the Russian um, language in the back, a picture of Herzl Street. So those who go to Tel Aviv, have been to Tel Aviv, we'll, we'll see how far Tel Aviv has progressed oh, God, in the yes. period of time, because I see three donkeys <laughs> walking up the street here, and in back, is the Gymnasia, the Herzliya Gymnasia, yeah. first Hebrew-speaking school in, in Israel. So this Amazing. was Herzl Street, and every city has in Israel this, this is has a Herzl Street. This is so, amazing that you've got such beautiful things. Oh it's my really God. an honor to collect it, it. And just a couple last things. There are hundreds, thousands of items w with Herzl image on it. So here just hold two. On. Before we continue, I have to ask. Sure. How did you start this love of, of collecting all of her? How, tell me the story. I like I really want to know. So the, it's an excellent question. There's yeah. there's really two strands to it. Firstly, I'm a collector. I ha I believe there is a collecting gene. Okay. I've collected I come by it honestly. <laughs> My parents were collect are collectors and um, Ever since I was a kid, I collected coins and stamps and hats, and so I like to collect. Okay. And also since I was a kid, probably 12, 13 years old, I had a fascination with Herzl. And it's a weird fascination for a 12-year-old <laughs> boy, I grant you that. But to me it was, I've always been fascinated about where the state of Israel came from. It is a marvel, it's miraculous in the history of civilization, yeah. never has such a thing happened. Yeah. A people who had a homeland were kicked out of it, not long once. to go back, not once, <laughs> many times, <laughs> long yeah. to go back. Yep, lived sometimes in okay situations, yep. but often in but terrible always situations. Wanted, always want to come. Always home. wanting to come yes. back and came back. Yes, and I've always been fascinated. How did that happen? And so. The, I then combined my genetic predisposition to collecting and my fascination with the state of Israel and its history towards building this collection. And the very first item I had is a portrait that hung in the home of my grandparents in Ramat Gan. My grandparents dreamed of going to the state of Israel since they were... Wow children in Belarus. They wow. came to Toronto, built a life, built a home, built a business, had children, wow, and then they grandchildren, did and in 1954, wow. moved to Ramat Gan. Wow. And in their home was this poster of Herzl. And when my grandmother passed away in 1990, I asked for that as my Yerusha, my oh, inheritance. Wow. And that was item one in my collection. And since then, Wow. I have about 5,000 more. Wow. This is amazing. It is. A, it, thank you. It is a little bit on. I, two items just to show yeah, examples no, no, of the please. kind of Herzl memorabilia there is. And, and 
This may be familiar to some of your viewers. Here is a workbook, a machberet, with an image of Herzl on yeah, it. That's, yeah. Would be a typical thing yeah. to have in schools in Israel. And lastly, a photo album, which is extremely <laughs> see, typical. As soon as I saw that, and I'm sure many Israelis will, I mean, I saw it in my, my parents' uh, photo albums. They had that. And as soon as I saw it, I said, my God, I know it. My parents had that. It's amazing. So when, when the state of Israel yes. was established in 1948, Herzl's image appeared on many, many, many items. And it was society's way of saying, we did it. What you dreamed actually came to be. And so that's why there's so many things for me to collect. So that's really a brief history of Herzl as seen through some items in my collection. So you know so much about Herzl. Uh, just a few words. Really, what kind of man was he? He was, it, it's hard to characterize him in one, one uh, or just a few words. He was a brilliant man. Yeah. He was one of those polypotential people. He was a writer. He knew how to deal with people. He yeah. understood economics. He understood politics. He was a vision, clearly a visionary, but not just a visionary big picture, let's have a Jewish state, but in great detail. His book, Old Neuland, had many specifics that we take for granted now. Like how to achieve it? No, the Jewish, the book, mm -hmm. The Jewish State, was mm -hmm. how to achieve it. Right. Old Neuland is what would it look like? And he talked about de a democratic country, freedom of, the, freedom of the press, lots of culture, communal farming, Science and technology being important. So hold on, so far. Electricity. So far? A, uh, a um, canal from the Red Sea, from the, from the Mediterranean Sea to the Dead Sea that's still being talked about yep. to power turbines yes. to bring electricity. Yeah. So he had a vision of the future. At the same time, I think he was difficult. He was a difficult person because he was stubborn and in insistent. But you most doer are. Right. You can't, you can't succeed <laughs> yes. with something as big as this without that. That's right. He was also not a great family man. He, yep. And so that's not a positive attribute, but it shows he was a normal person. We all have our issues. Yep. We're all not perfect in everything we try and do. So he was a normal guy who achieved magnificent things. He, pers he pursued this dream with such vigor during his lifetime, he essentially bankrupted his family. So that when he died suddenly at 44, his family was bereft. Okay. So there, is, there are many, many good things about Herzl, but he had his issues too. And he, had, he was also sickly. Um, he, had, he was a weak person. Physically weak. Physically. Now picture in, like, in the early 1900s, the medicine wasn't what we had yeah. now. And he was told by his doctor, slow down. No, no. If you don't slow down, you're going to die in this work. And Herzl said, I have so much to do before I die. I can't slow down. So he was, he was stubborn. He was brilliant. And we're all the beneficiaries of, of his brilliance and so hard work. So if... if um if Hertel is, you know, was sitting with us today, <laughs> do you think he would say that uh, the Jewish people, Israel, has achieved his dream? Well, I, it's an amazing question, and I hear that a lot. What would Herzl think about the state of Israel now? So Herzl, um, Herzl believed that by establishing a Jewish presence, a Jewish state uh -huh. in Palestine, it would be good for everybody. Everybody would be happy. Right. And we know from reading the paper every day, that's not the case. So Herzl would be surprised that, there, that this conflict persists, or that there was a conflict in the first place and that it persists. Herzl thought... And Are we talking about conflict with our neighbors or within, conflict within with ourselves? With the neighbors and with, with ourselves. ourselves. It were complicated. I think that would be, you know... Well, Herzl experienced that in his lifetime in the Zionist Congresses. Right. We're not tea parties. Everyone yeah. had lots of different views. Well. There was always blank Zionism. Religious Zionism, labor Zionism, yeah. communist Zionism, political Zionism, practical Zionism. Nothing's changed, right? We all have, a, we all have the same goal. We may differ... And yep. how to achieve it. Right. 
Herzl would also be surprised because the book, the Judenstadt, the Jewish State, its subtitle is A Modern Solution to the Jewish Problem, the Solution to Anti-Semitism. So Herzl thought that by us having our own homeland, anti-Semitism will would solve go away. The problem, yeah. And we all know that that's not the It's actually case. growing. Correct. And so Herzl would be surprised about that, but Herzl Herzl would be amazed that so many things he thought of came true. came true. But one important thing about Herzl, and he wrote this, is that he said the aim of Zionism is not just to have a plot of land for the Jewish people. It's more than that. It's what kind of society are we going to build in that land? Of course. He wanted the Jewish state to be a model society. And I, my takeaway from Herzl okay. is that Although Herzl's dream was fulfilled with the creation of the State of Israel, it has not been completed. And it's up to all of us, you and me and your viewers and kids in school and people living in Israel, everywhere, people of goodwill, to help craft that society, whatever it might be, because we'll all have different views, mm -hmm. but not take it for granted. Not think that because the state of Israel exists, we don't have to care about it, we don't have to nurture it, we don't have to worry about it or work for it. The lesson of Herzl to me is that... We have to stand, I think we have to stand on guard. We, we have, have to, to be united, and that's, I keep okay. saying that, if we're not united, we'll be in big trouble. We have to continue the yes. work. Yes. And Herzl's idea was an impossible, yeah. ridiculous, preposterous, idea yeah, I agree. and it happened yeah so anything can happen protect if we, our home we have to protect our home yes if we envision a homeland that's ultimately living in peace with its neighbors that's We're trying <laughs> absolutely that sounds I, impossible now never but no more impossible than in 1896 like the idea of a jewish state so nobody should give up yes continue to work for for it and towards it that's the lesson of herzl i'm on a mission my mission is to tell people about Herzl because in doing that, you understand so the work that we need to do. Yes. It reinforces the miracle that's the state of Israel and the fact that we shouldn't let our guard down. We got to continue to you. work towards it. So I do it in, very, in different ways. So one, and I want to give this to you, is a pair of Herzl socks, Herzl oh. playing hockey. Oh. Now Herzl doesn't play hockey. <laughs> he never heard of hockey. But it's a very Canadian Herzl item. I'd and the idea, not, and I'm wearing mine today as well. <laughs> the idea is you wear these, people I will ask you who's on your socks. You'll say it's Herzl, and they'll say who's Herzl. Who's Herzl and, that's, and you can tell them the story. Yeah, and the, it's a conversation piece. That's correct. To begin the conversation. Beautiful. I'm also the chairman of the Jewish Foundation, which is Toronto, uh, the Jewish community of Toronto's endowment arm. And for Yom Hatzmut, Israel's Independence Day, wow. we sent out. 2,000 little Herzls to, to people in our community, and I want to give this to you, really oh, to have a little Herzl on, on your desk or table. And anyway, it gets put together like that. And the, the, the message was simply... It's another conversation piece. Who is Herzl? Exactly, and it's I, I on people's it. table and, and say who that is. And, and the message with, that went with it is we hope this inspires you to pursue your dreams. Wow. And lastly, there is a, um, a school in Chicago. It's a public school in North Lawndale, which is an African-American neighborhood. And uh, it was formerly a Jewish neighborhood 100 years ago. And 100 years ago, the Jewish community asked wow. the Chicago public school system to name it after Herzl. It's the Theodore Herzl Public School. Wow. And I have an gone honor. there five times with, with friends and members of the Jewish community of Chicago to, to teach the kids who Herzl is. It's beautiful. And in this school, they view Herzl and Martin Luther King in a very similar way. Both had dreams. Yes. Both wanted to improve the That's condition right. of their people. That's right. And so for the students, we, we prepared these blue bracelets, which I wear all the time. On one side, it's Herzl's motto, if you will it, it is no dream. And on the other side, it's Martin Luther King's, I have a dream. We all can achieve our dreams. 100%. All we have to do is work hard towards it. So oh, this is I, for you I as well. I love it. Inspiration. I love it. I will definitely wear that. We're going to show a video 
of actually you in a school in Chicago. And I hope uh, the viewer will enjoy it. But I think beyond that, first of all, I wanted to thank you. This is amazing. I mean, I, I, it was a history lesson for me. As much as I know, I still need to know more. Um, but I think it's very important for you. I know you're a busy lawyer, but you have to continue going to other school and sending the message. This is beautiful. The school in Chicago is not enough. I think you need to spread the word here, starting our schools here. I think it's beautiful. I do that. I have groups come to my house. We just had a group on Sunday, Diller Teen Fellows. Beautiful. Kids in grade 11. I speak. I have a documentary film. I'm out there trying to spread this message. You're doing a great job. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much, David. Please come back again, and because I know you have 5,000 uh, items. <laughs> I can do this about 300 <laughs> more times and not to repeat any single item. We'll love it. We'll have you on again. Thank you very much. Thank I really you for appreciate having me. It. And I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and I hope to see you Here's next week. Thank you for joining us. In the late 1800s, so it took about 50 years from the day he had this idea and started to work towards it until it actually happened. And before that, if you, it's hard to imagine because this country of Israel exists. When he came up with this idea, people thought this was crazy. This was the most ridiculous idea. It's impossible. Jews were minorities in, very, in various countries. They were hated where they lived. They were um, dispersed all around the world. How are we gonna get people to organize and get together and start this process. But Herzl had so much charisma, he had so much energy and used his brains and his heart and his energy to actually start this process. So what did he do? What are the kinds of things that Herzl do? How do you start a country from nothing? So what he did first, after he wrote the book, is he started traveling around, speaking to kings and uh, leaders and all kinds of influential people to present them with this, his idea. And then he called a meeting. And, and so, are all of you coming to the movie tonight? Yes. So you'll see in the movie, he, he called a meeting of the leaders of the Jewish communities from around the world. And Jews were all over. There. Some were in America, they were in Europe, they were in Iraq and in, um, and in Palestine, which is the country which, the area which is now Israel, he called a meeting together of all the Jews in Basel, Switzerland, and started the process, started talking about it, figuring out how are we going to do this? Who's going to speak to who? What do we need? How do you go about doing it? And he, um, he then had a series of these meetings, and, um, and the process started. One of the ideas, when you have a country, you need a bank. So he, he organized the founding of a bank. We needed to buy land. So he organized an, an organization that went to buy land. We need to meet, so let's have a system where we meet every year. And he created this whole infrastructure that ultimately, within 50 years, resulted in the state of Israel being born. What's interesting, though, is he died prematurely. He died eight years after he came up with this idea. Does anyone know how old Herzl was when he died? 44. Excellent, 44. Um, when you're in the NFL, you should have that number, 44. <laughs> um, um, he was 44 years old, and he got turned on to the idea of the Jewish state when he was 36. So everything you're gonna see in the movie tonight, everything we're talking about, he accomplished in eight years, but he died 44 years before Israel was founded, right? He died in 1904, was founded in 1948. But Herzl created an organization. He created um, a movement of people who were turned on to this idea so that when he died, unfortunately and prematurely, there were people to carry on this idea. Herzl said, it, at the end of the first meeting, this first, it's called the Zionist Congress, he said, in the, if I were to talk about the creation of the Jewish state now, people will think I'm crazy. Because people did think he was crazy, as I said, it's a nutty idea. But I'm fine.